This very brief video looks at root loci with positive feedback. The previous video then introduced five simple rules for doing a quick sketch, assuming that we had negative feedback. So what changes if instead of negative feedback, we've got positive feedback and when and how might this happen? Now this video is going to assume that you're familiar with the previous one and thus with the five rules discussed there. Now what we showed in the previous video is that if you represent your system as k n over d, so that's gm equals k n over d, then with negative feedback the closed loop pole polynomial is k n plus d. If you have positive feedback what you'll notice is you have a different pole polynomial. So you're going to get different poles. And obviously the root loci will also be different. Let's look then at the five sketching rules. We want to see how these rules change, okay, when we go from negative feedback to positive feedback, but we're going to use the same five rules. We're not going to give the detailed theory, which is on the website if you're particularly interested. Rules one and two then. The key thing here is there are no changes to rules one and two. They are the same with both positive and negative feedback. So you start with the open loop poles and open loop zeros. Rule three, asymptotes or asymptote directions. There is a change here. If you look at this formula here, you'll see it's slightly different from what we had with negative feedback. And the key difference is noted here. You're doing the roots of plus one rather than minus one. So you're going to get slightly different di directions. So if the excess of poles over zeros is two, you get the square root of one, which is going to be plus or minus one, which is naught degrees or 180 degrees as a direction. If k minus m is three, you want the cube roots of one, which are going to be naught degrees or plus or minus 120 degrees. And k minus m equals 4, you're going to get 0 degrees, 180 degrees, and plus or minus 90 degrees. And you'll see those directions are different from the ones you got with negative feedback. And just a reminder, what did we do when we talked about the asymptote directions with negative feedback? We made an assumption. We assumed that the maximum power of s had a positive coefficient. Now, if the maximum power of s has a negative coefficient, which can happen if you include a factor like this, then implicitly the rules that you're using have to go from negative feedback to positive feedback because of this identity here. Rule four then, what about the centroid of the asymptote? Does this rule change? And you can see the answer is no. It's the same with positive feedback and negative feedback. And there was the rule that we gave you in the previous video. You do the sum of the poles minus the sum of the zeros equals k minus m times the centroid. Rule five. Now this is similar for positive and negative feedback. So this is what we did with negative feedback. We basically stood on the axis and looked to the right and counted how many poles and zeros can we see. And if it was odd, we said the loci was on the axis. Well, what about positive feedback? You'll see the steps are almost identical and there's only one difference. You're counting even numbers rather than odd numbers. So here's a summary of root loci rules using positive feedback. Rules one, two and four are unchanged, exactly the same, nothing new to learn. Rule three, the asymptote directions are different. So you need to be clear on that. And rule five, you're counting even numbers of poles and zeros rather than odd. So what you'll notice is because these two rules change, you've got to be really, really clear on which rules do you need. Do you need positive feedback rules or negative feedback rules? Here's an example then. And you'll see this example has got a right half plane factor, but more importantly, you can see that factor is written as one minus s. So the maximum power of s in this denominator has got a negative coefficient. And so therefore, I'm going to need the positive feedback root loci rules 
to do the root loci. So let's do the sketch now then. And as before, we'll do it very, very quickly. So rule one, where are the poles? So we've got a pole at one, a pole on the origin, a pole at minus one, and a pole at minus three. And we've also got a zero at minus four. So there's rules one and two. Right, rule three, asymptotes. So we've got here k minus m equals three. So there's three asymptotes. And because we've got positive feedback rules, those asymptotes are going to be zero degrees and plus or minus 120 degrees. What about the centroid? Well, the centroid is going to be minus four plus one plus four over three. So remember sum of poles. So we add together all the pole positions minus the sum of zeros divided by k minus m. And so what you'll see is you get a third. So if I try and mark that with red, so basically the centroid is going to be here. Now the directions 120 degrees. So the asymptotes are going to be something like this. Now, so that was rule four. Rule five, we basically look and say, have we got an even number to the right? So here, we've got an even number to the right. So you can see the positive real axis is on the low side. Here and here. So what you can see is going to happen is this pole is moving to this zero. This pole is moving to plus infinity. And these two poles are going to come together and then they're going to go off to these asymptotes here. So some conclusions. We've introduced the modifications of the five rules for sketching root loci with positive feedback. And the main reason for needing these rules are where you have a negative feedback implementation, but the system includes a factor of the form A minus S. So the maximum power of S has a negative coefficient, as you can see in this example here. As ever, if you want an accurate plot, use a computer.